Hello, everyone. Welcome back for part three. We're going to jump right in and talk about Lori Anderson, a artist I really greatly admire. Um, I have some lecture notes again about her piece that she premiered at BAM as a part of their second annual um, New Wave Festival. Um, and that was United States, which happened in two parts over the course of two nights, um, what, parts one and two being um, on, on the first evening and parts three and four being on this, uh, the second part of the evening. Um, and it fe features musical numbers, spoken word pieces, uh, animated vignettes that are really about life in the United States. And um, it includes her work, Oh Superman. Um, and that's going to be what we listen to uh, in addition to hearing her speak about her work. Um, there is a CD release of um, United States parts one through four as a live album. Unfortunately, it's not the length of the multimedia performance. So seeing it live would have been a completely different um, uh, theatrical um, invitation to uh, experiencing her work. Um, it, it, and just as a heads up, Oh Superman was uh, so popular and ended up being uh, included on her later album, uh, Big Science, which was released in 82. Um, but uh, Lori Anderson, like I said, a very riveting artist. She was a part of that, that video in part one. Um, we're going to dive right in and talk about her piece, Oh Superman. Let me go ahead and pull it up. Wonderful song. If you haven't heard it all, please uh, use the listening link uh, in the description to check out more of it. But it gives you an idea as to um, uh, some of the musical components that were a part of her presentation, United States. And obviously the content here is also reflective of this idea of offering vignettes of the American life. Um, to kind of round out the presentation, there are a couple of clips of it on the internet. I want to show you uh, one of them, somewhat short, to give you an idea as to how this, because this is the music video that you just saw, which certainly picks upon um, uh, elements of the premiere performance that happened at the Next Wave Festival, but there are, of, of course, differences. Gentlemen, Lori Anderson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what you are observing here are highly magnified examples or facsimiles of human sperm. <laughs> generation after generation of these tiny creatures have sacrificed themselves in their persistent, often futile attempt to transport the basic male genetic code. Where is this information coming from? They have no eyes, no ears, yet some of them already know that they will be bald. Some of them know that they will have small, crooked teeth. Over half of them will end up as women. 400 million living creatures all knowing precisely the same thing carbon copies of each other in a kamikaze race against the clock. Now, some of you may be surprised to learn that if a sperm were the size of a salmon, it would be swimming its seven-inch journey at 500 miles per hour. <laughs> if a sperm were the size of a whale, however, it would be traveling at 15,000 miles per hour, or Mach 20. Now, imagine, if you will, 400 blind and desperate sperm whales departing from the Pacific coast of North America, swimming at 15,000 miles per hour, and arriving in Japanese coastal waters in just under 45 minutes. How would they be received? Would they realize they were carrying information? 
a message. Would there be room for so many millions? Would they know that they have been sent for a purpose? some spoken word with uh, musical elements in addition to singing. This really picks up on the animated aspect. Um, so uh, very cool multimedia presentation by Laurie Anderson in the early 80s. Um, before we close off our discussion of this artist, I want her to speak a little bit about her art. Um, and uh, the creative process. So let me pull up the interview of Laurie Anderson. At, at the time, and uh, when I was in school, mm -hmm. uh, there was some kind of um, requirement, really, that uh, basically sculpture had to, A, weigh a lot, and B, be welded. Uh -huh. And so there's this kind of machismo that was going on, and my work really didn't have a lot to do with that. The it became uh, things with words, and so big photographs on the on the wall with kind of scraggly writing. And I thought, wait a second, I if I want to use words. I should use them, all aspects of them, tone of voice as well. So I thought, well, the easiest way is to just say the words. Mm -hmm. But it also came out of. Uh, uh, a night job that I had teaching uh, while I was going to school in sculpture. At night I taught uh, Egyptian architecture and Assyrian uh, sculpture at uh, City College. And this was uh, really when I first began doing performances, was was that teaching experience. Because basically I, I uh, was not an art historian and I just, you know, forgot the, uh, uh, a lot of the facts. So I would just make them up, you know, and people were writing them down and, and I was giving them tests on them. <laughs> and I was, uh, I was, uh, I eventually quit that job. And not before I was fired, but very, very close. And, so I thought this is this is wonderful. It's dark in here, and, and just talking to people and their pictures on the wall, and and so the first performance I did that looked like looked like the work that it became was in 1975, something called As Colon If, which was a work that I did at Artist Space, and that had a lot of things in it, slides, and it also had music, but. Uh, uh, I was using the violin as a as a prop, really, as a as a ventriloquist dummy, as another thing to talk to and uh, a way to have a conversation. So, uh, not really as music. I would do things like have a speaker inside the violin and play by itself, or fill it with water, or something like this. So. Uh, it was only gradually that, that actual music got into the work. Night Bite continues with performance artist Lori Anderson and her most recent work, Sharky's Day. After so, uh, interesting late night interview by Lori Anderson. Um, so, talking about like the uh, how music is invited into her life as a performance artist through the use of it as a, as a prop. And um, so she's really coming to music, not as a musician, but as a performance artist who's engaging in aspects of sound sculpture. Um, Lori Anders, there's lots of clips. I specifically chose something that was only a couple of years after her um, performance of uh, United States um, by about two or three years, but uh, I, if she's a new name to you, can't encourage you enough to check her out. Um, 
we're going to move on and talk about what happens in 1983 um, with uh, and uh, the next New Wave Festival, this is gonna be the third one, an interesting collaboration happens with Cal Arts and um, reviving a, uh, a lesser, very lesser known work um, from Russia. So let me go ahead and pull up my lecture notes so we can discuss that one. All right, so it's this piece called Victory Over the Sun and um, it has a really interesting story behind it. So Victory Over the Sun is a Cuba futurist Russian opera that was performed in 1913. Um, and it was only performed twice and then never again. Um, much of the opera was also lost. So what we do know of the opera was, um, was found and what we found were fragments of the music, um, extensive though sketches of the, uh, or certainly more extensive than the music, uh, designs of the costumes and the set. And um, the California Institute of the Arts, which is a Disney endowed school in Southern California, um, became interest, a group of composers became, and well, a, a composer, a, um, a scenic designer and costume designer, uh, came in contact with this work, Victory Over the Sun, um, in the 80s and uh, revived it by filling in the missing pieces. Uh, and of course, translating the Russian text into English for um, uh, uh, American audiences. Um, there were other artists that were presented in 1983, Philip Glass was represented. Uh, the photographer was um, performed, another large scale work by Philip Glass. Um, but rather than talk about him as an artist again, I wanted to discuss Victory Over the Sun. So what's a bummer is that, uh, you know, I don't have access to all of BAM's archives. They do have some archives available from past New Wave festivals um, and some video clips. So there's like a one minute video clip that I can show you in addition to um, uh, uh, different pictures, photographs from the production um, and the original um, uh, sketches from the conception of the work in 19, you know, early 19. Hundreds. So let me go ahead and pull up our archive resources. Okay, so here are the BAM archives. Um, this is the Next Wave Festival, like I said, from 1983. Lots of beautiful black and white stills from um, Philip Glass's production of The Photographer. Um, the promotional materials, which are really, really cool to look at. Interestingly enough, check this out, Morgan Freeman performed as a part of the Next Wave Festival. So there are theatric events also happening. Um, again, more of the photographer, Philip Glass, um, promotional materials, love this particular photo. Um, again, uh, he was the main event that was a part of the first New Wave Festival. So really wanted to um, showcase his work in regards to that variety of um, press releases news releases about these different acts. And here we go. This one was the one that was of major interest to me. It's an excerpt of the performance from Victory Over the Sun. Um, so let's go ahead and, and watch it. What all of have I eat dog and white feet. <laughs>
so really, oh, oh, sorry, we don't need to watch that again. Um, very interesting performance though. Uh, there were also photos from it. Um, this is all Trisha Brown, Phil Glass. You know, I have them in another location. Hold on. Um, but very cubist in terms of design. Um, uh, hopefully, in terms of visual um, components, uh, you maybe recognize a lot of looks that were familiar from Picasso. So huge style point there. Um, want there's um, uh, one other link that I want to show you about Victory Over the Sun in particular. Okay, so here are some um, photographs from the uh, performance. This one actually might be misattributed, but these two I'm certain are from Victory Over the Sun. Um, so again, very kind of Picasso oriented design. And here's um, one of the, um, the sketches for costume design from the original 1913 production. So um, again, yeah, just wanted to show you a sli slightly lesser known work that happened uh, in uh, the third New Wave Festival. Um, I want to pull up my lecture notes one more, one more time and talk briefly about um, the next festival that happened in uh, 1984, um, or at least introduce it. And that was Meredith Monk's um, The Games. And uh, she's a, um, she was again, a part of our, our first video. Um, uh, hopefully you'll recognize her when I pull up an interview of her, um, but a uh, really fascinating artist uh, who much like Laurie Anderson worked in multiple disciplines, although music uh, is a stronger focal point of her work. So um, in fact, I'm gonna begin our, um, our fourth and final section talking about her. So. I will see you back um, for our fourth part and final part shortly.